So now we can move on to the uh, next phase of the build, which is the uh, bandpass um, filter, and that's uh, this part of the circuit here. Actually, it's a bandpass filter and splitter. Uh, the function of this, obviously, is to uh, perform the bandpass functionality, as well as to split the incoming signal into in-phase and anti-phase signals for uh, ingestion into the FST3253. Um, so the uh, uh, bandpass filter itself consists of a couple of caps, uh, an air variable cap, and then we have uh, this transformer here, which is constructed of a, um, let me get the bag out. So it has a T50 toroid, uh, the one on the, the bigger one on the, at the top here. And uh, so t it's a T52, uh, 50 indicates uh, the diameter is 51 hundredths of an inch, and, Two is indicated by the red color, the material of the toroid itself. The, t the uh, transformer consists of uh, a single primary and three secondaries. So the single primary for 20 meters is three turns. Then we have two other secondaries that are both three turns each. And then finally a third secondary, which is 30 turns. And you can see from the uh, table here, uh, uh, this, the turns ratio varies depending on uh, on what band you're on. So there's a special uh, technique that's uh, outlined in the um, in the uh, manual, which which I'll go through later on. But basically, um, instead of winding all these turns separately, you wind a single turn. So you go 30 tur turns around, and then you form a loop out here. Come back, do another three turns, form another loop out here. Come back, another three turns, form a loop, and then you're back here. Uh, with another three turns. And then uh, for each of these loops, you cut them. So what that basically allows you to do is it kind of saves you the fiddling around of uh, having to sort of wind these each of these ones separately, keeps it all in one piece. Um, and I'll walk through that later on. So on, as far as where it goes on the board, let's just uh, pan over to the, to the board itself here. Excuse me for a moment while I get this, uh, get this ready. So this is where the uh, transformer goes here. Uh, this is the primary winding right here. And then these are the two three turn secondaries here and here. And then finally, this is the 30 turn secondary that goes here and here. Now rounding out the uh, um, band pass filter, there is the variable cap here. And then there's two additional caps here that vary from a on a band by band basis. And I, I think with 20 meters, you only populate one of these. So on to how, to, uh, how I'll be uh, testing this is uh, just looking at the, uh, the circuit here. The, uh, the signal comes in on receive uh, through the, uh, the low pass filter here, which I, I won't be installing at this part. And then through this FET, uh, and this FET actually gets turned on or turned off depending on whether you're receiving or transmitting respectfully. So I'll basically inject the signal here, and then I'll be sampling the signal here and here. The other part of the, uh, of the uh, splitter circuit here is this uh, resistor divider that I mentioned before, which sets the 2.5 volt bias for the, uh, for the rest of the circuit. So just one quick note, uh, one of the things uh, that you can encounter um, while winding this is there is software in the kit that uh, allows you to actually uh, test the band pass filter and you adjust it using the variable cap. But you can encounter the situation where you, uh, the cap is, the plates are fully open or fully closed. And in that case, you ha actually have to, uh, uh, with the, in the case where the uh, capacitor is fully closed, you have to add turns to the uh, to the 30 turn secondary in the case where the capacitor is is fully open you have to remove turns so we'll see what happens there so let's get on with winding the uh, transformer
So there's the uh, first 30 turns wound there. Um, you want to keep uh, the ideally the 30 turns. Let me stop that from vibrating. Um, I, you ideally want to keep the 30 turns to less than half of the overall toroid. Uh, that's just the way the circuit goes in. That's going to be tougher on the uh, higher higher bands, lower bands, I guess. Uh, you know, 60, 80 meter bands. It's uh, it's going to be a lot of wire on there. So so anyway, so what you do now is you take this. And you create a loop before the next uh, before the next set of turns. So, the size of the loop, um, you know, you basically want it a couple of inches. Um, so yeah, something like uh, maybe like this. Say that gives you enough room. Gives you enough room. Let's separate that out there, so that you can create the wires off it. And then what I do is just give it a twist, so that it doesn't become unwound. Bear with. And then obviously the next one is uh, three turns and then another loop and then three turns and then another loop. So uh, let me get on with that. So here's the uh, semi-finished toroid here with the uh, the three extra loops there. So next stage, we're going to cut the loops, and then we'll have the uh, the separation between the uh, the uh, primary and the three secondaries. So let me go ahead and do that, and then uh, come back. Okay, so this is the uh, transformer fully wound. There's the 30-turn uh, primary there. Sorry, the 30-turn secondary there. Here and here are the other two, uh, two three-turn secondaries. And then here is the three-turn primary. So basically now the next step is to tin all these to uh, burn the enamel off uh, with the soldering iron for each of these leads. Um, and then uh, install it on the board. So uh, that's to come. Okay, so let's uh, let's get this installed onto the board here. So what I'm what I'm going to do is first deal with the uh, the two outside the thirty turn primary. So they both they go in here and over here making sure not to uh, cross the wires over. And then uh, the bottom leads of the three turns all lining up here, making sure I've got the right ones going to the right section. It's all a bit, uh, it's all a bit fiddly. So there, that's looking good. Let me just pull that down from underneath the board. There we go. Got to make sure that the uh, these wires don't get crossed over on the uh, on the transformer. That's pretty important. So that's looking good. And then, before we get it completely down, we'll put in the uh, remaining wires in here. Once it, uh, once it gets in, it'll all tighten up uh, quite nicely. As long as I don't cross these over, that is. that one in and then this is the final one all right okay so the uh, the torrid's all in it's not uh, it's not soldered yet but um, let me just turn it around so we can get a better view there 
and spin this around so you can see there's the uh, primary there, two secondaries here and here, and then the, the 30 turn primary. Now, what you 30 turn secondary, I keep calling the primary, I don't know why I keep doing that, but anyway. Um, so I'll solder all these up and then I'm gonna have to test uh, continuity to make sure that um, the, uh, you know, that everything is okay. So what I'll do is I'll solder this on, come back and then we can test some continuity. So that's soldered in. Um, now just checking continuity in. Um, so there should be continuity obviously between these two ends of the, uh, of the 30 turn secondary. So let me check that. All right. So there also should be continuity between the 30 turn second, secondary and the primary here. So we should, if we check here, let's just tap here and here. All right, so we've got continuity there. There should be no continuity between this primary and either of these two secondaries. So no continuity there. Trying on the other side. Oops. No continuity there, I must have touched something else. And then finally, there should be continuity between these two sets of secondaries. So from here, across to here. Yes, across to here, across to here. So that's the continuity check for that, and uh, we can move on to uh, installing the uh, cap and um, the caps and the uh, the variable cap. Well, it's uh, it's freezing in Texas this morning. Um, I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd finish up this uh, uh, this uh, band pass filter and split a combination and. Uh, show the results on the oscilloscope. So just to describe the test setup here, this is where I'm injecting the signal. And uh, that is representative of this portion on the circuit right here. So right at the source of this uh, Q5BS170. That's where I'm injecting the signal. I'm actually, I've actually uh, soldered a couple of resistor leads to the bottom. Um, of the circuit board um, where I'm at, where I'm probing it, and uh, just to show you where that is on the schematic is right here and right here. So I'm injecting uh, a signal from my uh, signal generator here, uh, 14.05 at uh, at half a volt, and then the result of uh, of probing at those two points that I mentioned is this uh, trace right here. So you can see. I've got a uh, signal in phase and a signal exactly 180 degrees out of phase. Um, and that's exactly the, uh, the, the result uh, we should expect from, from this. So the other thing I can demonstrate is um, uh, this bandpass filter ha is very narrow. Um, and so let me adjust it. So I'm just adjusting the, uh, the, the variable cap. Actually, it turns out that uh, in the 20 meter kit, you uh, don't install either C5 or C8. So but just let me show the result of tuning the uh, bandpass filter. So tune down a little bit. So you can see it has a very tight, uh, very tight uh, bandpass filter. I'm barely touching the air variable cap. So the, the good thing is that uh, uh, the, uh, the cap itself is neither fully closed nor fully open. So uh, I don't have to add or remove turns from the inductor, which is a great thing. Uh, particularly adding turns to the inductor is uh, is quite a pain in the butt. So uh, so anyway, that's the bandpass filter completed. Um, for the next uh, set of videos, um, as I mentioned, I'm going to put in the microcontroller, uh, hook up the power to the SI5351, um, and then um, we should be able to see that signal coming through uh, the quadra quadrature sampling detector, the Taylo detector. So just uh, sort of moving down on the circuit a little bit. So once I have the microcontroller and the synthesizer in uh, and these resistors in, I should be able to probe around here injecting a signal as I'm doing here. And we should see the I and the Q products right here. Um, now these, op th these are op amps I won't install just yet. Uh, but once we install these op amps, 
when I inject a signal, um, uh, we should be able to hear the signal all the way through the audio chain. Uh, and that would be the kind of the receiver complete end to end, except for, you know, there's obviously a few things we have to do. There's the low pass filter has to be installed. There's some receive transmit circuitry that has to be turned on, but uh, that's it for now. Um, next is the uh, microcontroller.